Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Wealth in Christ Show, a show where we inspire the masses to become financially free without compromising their faith. On the show today, we have Serena Mishugo. I hope I said that correctly. Serena is the founder of Christian lifestyle magazine called V. In this episode, we discuss what it's like to own and create an impactful Christian magazine in an increasing secular world. So thank you for being here, Serena. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm really good. Um, I'm excited for this especially, but yeah, things have been good. It's been a, a busy week where it's the focus has been, again, ironically, a lot of building and restructuring for the magazine. So uh, yeah, good restful Saturday so far, but uh, very well. <laughs> that was really good. I guess the first and the following question I have, you know, what inspired you to create V Magazine? Um, so the journey was quite an interesting one. Um, so it really started off from like growing up, I was always a lover of fashion, a lover of writing. Um, and that's where it really stemmed from. And I kind of took a break from writing because I was very much focused on like academics. I was like, okay, let me just you know, get my degree, do all of these things. And then I went and did a fashion internship for my year abroad. And it was a comms internship. So I was writing and everybody was like really encouraging me, like, you're a really great writer. Like, why don't you write more? And I was like, actually, yeah, you know, something that I loved growing up. So I decided to sort of start a blog. So I was like a blog that was going to cover um, just the topics that I really loved. So faith, fashion, fitness and lifestyle so that was sort of where the blog started um but I was very inconsistent with it I was on and off if I have time I'll do it then I actually got a prophetic word that said I was going to have a magazine and the person described the magazine I was like this is literally the blog that I that I have at the moment so I was like hey god so god wants this to be a blog yeah. so this is maybe like 2019 um again on and off on and off like I'm like, God, you're going to get mad at me because I'm being inconsistent with it. Lord, forgive me. Then it was after fasting, actually, um, after a very particular dream that God gave me. Um, ultimately, in the dream, somebody told me to write the vision. And God downloaded the vision of this magazine um, where it was inspiring women to really honor God in their lifestyle in all areas of your life. So the mm. word V is... Um, life in French and our motto is putting the life back into lifestyle life being a person and life is Jesus so that John 10 10 so it's really saying that you know God is glorified in everything that you do and he cares about everything that you do whether you're in fashion whether you're a singer whether you're a pastor so I'm constantly putting different women who are in different industries on the front covers and talking about different areas of lifestyle with a godly standard, whether we are talking about food, God cares about what you eat. So that was really the inspiration. Um, God had to download the vision because we have so many lifestyle magazines, but at what cost, mm. you know? So it's like, it's the standard of the world, you know, so that women should do this, women should be like this, but what is God's godly standard? And we can take, uh, and part of my inspiration actually was, I went on a brunch with different girls um, that were there and to be honest, there were, none of them were Christians and the conversations had at the table. And I'm like, we don't realize that part of the conversations that were being had was even demonic. People talking about star signs and that's how much culture has influenced. Imagine I'm like, but I'm a lover of brunch. I'm a lover of going out to eat and doing all these things. There are a whole community of Christian women who desire to have fellowship, speak about godly things, but don't necessarily feel like there's a place within the Christian world to have an interest in lifestyle, because that's why I started the blog initially was, it was called the exotic norm. It was the fact that I didn't feel like I fit in. I think people's mm. I, idea of what Christianity was, I was like, I don't know if that's like, it felt very two dimensional. And then I was like, but the world, I'm like, you're not feeding me anything. This is at the detriment of my spirit and my soul there has to be, like, God cares about everything. There has to be this like, interlink that isn't going to be compromising. And that's what it really was the vision where it's God cares about everything. You can glorify God in your lifestyle because he cares about that. 
and really merging that to find women and create a space for women and media that's going to edify them, but also feel like they can take spaces that don't necessarily feel Christian. Like our last issue was a gamer. Um, she's a Christian gamer who's been, you know, um, with huge people in the gaming industry. And that shows that God can send you anywhere. We are sent to these places and God wants to be glorified. So yeah, that was very long-winded, but that's sort of the the vision um, and the inspiration behind it. That's very, that's very inspiring. You know, one question I want to ask is, I guess the question is what made you not, I guess, you said in the beginning you started being inconsistent. Was there yeah. something that was allowing you to be inconsistent? Like what was the cause of you being inconsistent? Um, simply put, lack of vision. Um, Habakkuk 2 2 says, write the vision and make it plain so that all those that read it can run. So, a lot of the times we don't realize that we're, our inability to run is because we haven't perceived the vision. The vision keeps you going, the why will always keep you going. I don't have a why. My why was just, I want to, I can write and I'm interested in it. But when I realized there was a kingdom purpose behind what I was creating and it was about ed edifying other people. That's my why. Even till today, there's times that my emotions and our feelings and inconvenience of, oh, this is taking time. Should I really be doing this? It's the why that keeps me going, that I'm doing this onto the Lord, that this is actually my worship. This is how I minister as well. So once I just, I take away from this is just business or this is just a hobby or this is just something long-term that I want to do, it's actually, this is how, this is ministry. The vision is the fact that this is going to be edifying onto others, that other women will be blessed by this. I can't be selfish with the gifts and the grace and the vision that God has given me. It's when you are kingdom minded and when you're God minded, you will keep going. And sometimes you have to reread the vision. That's why I always say to people, if you're starting a business, if you're starting anything, write the vision down, whether it's a ministry, write it down. I um, remember my pastor told me to do this, write a manifesto concerning your own life. Obviously, it has to be godly inspired. What is God concer saying concerning you? That when life will tell you the opposite, when your circumstances are going to tell you the opposite, I read my manifesto and say that this is what God says concerning me. I re I reread the vision of V. So I know that, okay, this is why I'm doing this. If you lose the why, there is no reason for you to keep going. You will, it will always feel like a cost as opposed to an honor to do what God is calling you to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. I like how you're afraid that honor to do what God is calling you to do. And, you know, one thing you said that caught my attention is that oftentimes in this Christian world, um, or just in this world living as a Christian, it's hard to, how can I say, it, be authentically you because of what is considered traditional or Christian norms, I would say, you know, having certain conversation, what is about lifestyle, you know, women, um, just womanhood, you know, all these things is not something that often spoke out. Like, you know, like you say, go to brunch, talk about everything else on brunch or dinners we go to outside of like actual things that affect us as Christians. You know, why do you think that's the reason like some of these conversations are not ha being have, you know, more common um i would say i think it's because we think it's carnal our perception of these topics as carnal and we assume that god doesn't care right um and when we realize as human beings there's three elements to us and i think this i truly believe that this is a reflection of the triune god that we serve you know father son holy spirit we are um spirit soul and body right so sometimes we take it as we become over-spiritualized, that we assume that God only cares about our spirit, mm. but we don't realize that God cares about our soul. So soul consists of your emotions. It consists of your will. It consists of your feelings, of all of those things. The Bible explicitly talks about these elements, it talks about your feelings. It talks about, so even when we hear the word heart, it's often referring back to your soul. So you know, the heart is deceitfully wicked. So how do I make sure that my heart is aligned with God? Because it matters, because my heart can influence me to do certain things. Um, even how it says I've planted things in your heart to do something. So somebody will have a, a wicked thought and do it, or somebody will have a godly thought 
You think about Peter, how did he know that Jesus was the son of God? It was divinely inspired through his his soul, right? Um, so we have to understand that we are, there's different parts of us. We have to present our bodies as living sacrifices. So those are three distinct parts of the human being and that impact our human experience. So when we often think only assume that the spirit matters and we neglect our soul and our body, we are we have like we become uneven, right? We see in the Bible how people have been destabilized because of a soul issue. Mm -hmm. So you don't realize that all of this matters. All of it matters unto God. The friends that you keep. That's why I've written articles about friendship. You know, that friend is going to build you up. The Bible talks about godly friends. The Bible and all of it's in there. And I think that's what we don't realize. There's not um one matter or issue of life that it does not speak about. We have betrayal of friendships. We have marital issues in the Bible. We have wisdom so that somebody's able to build successful business because of that. We see in Proverbs 31, if you realize the detail of Proverbs 31 woman, everyone talks about um, the virtuous woman, talks about what time she wakes up, talks about the fact that she's organized, talks about that she has the ability to find what land to invest in, that she knows about the finest of clothes, all of it is there. It even talks about eating healthy in the Bible. There was a king who was stabbed and he didn't even know he was stabbed because his belly was so big and it swallowed up the knife. So it even talks about the health issues, generational, all of it's there. So it's we have a tendency to think that all those other aspects are carnal. But the Bible touches on every single issue when it comes to this life. There is not an issue of this life that is not answered in the Bible. So once we realize that, yes, we are spiritual, but we have soul things to deal with. We have um, we have also body things that we need to deal with. Then we start to realize that God cares about the total experience that you have with him because your soul can impact your relationship with God. Right. Mm -hmm. So even and part of the, the magazine's motto is also this. God is responsible for my joy. I'm responsible for my happiness. Because hmm. happiness is circumstantial, right? It depends on like what's happening around me, what's going on. Joy is not based on circumstances. Joy is not a feeling, right? If I want to experience happiness, which can be very fleeting and momentarily, I have to do things to make myself happy. But God, God cares about your whole well-being. And I think once we start realizing how faithful God is and how God cares about our wholeness and us being well, well in spirit, well in mind, well in emotions, you'll realize that all of this, even the little things that you might not think is important, God still deems as important. So I think we need to shift from a very religious mindset that God just cares about X, Y, Z, that he cares also about the little things. No, you're 100% right. Uh, I can't word that any better. Um, that God does care about every aspect of our life, even the little details. Um, and it kind of reminds me, like just preparing for this whole interview and just like how your whole magazine is about every aspect of a Christian woman's life and how, you know, it should reflect God, you know, it should reflect, you know, the God that we serve. And remember the conversation I was having with a, um, a church mate and basically he was telling me, like he's a DJ and he was having a conversation about Christian music and how, I guess, a lot of Christians don't listen to Christian music um, forever, I guess, because the sound is not the same as the worldly music. Mm -hmm. And it kind of was like, like going to like going back to your brunch, it made me like think like a lot of things that we are neglecting you know, and saying, oh, it's not a big issue. You're not, it's not a, it ain't a big sin. And whatever people would say, you know, listen to ungodly music. It affects every aspect of our life. It affects the way we communicate. It affects the way we look at women. It affects the way we look at men. And I think it's something that's often like, it's okay. You know, God understands, you know, me as a person. God understands where I'm at, you know, and currently in life. And that was just something that having this conversation with you brought back to my memory that is important for us to be mindful of every little thing that we take in. A hundred And which leads me to yeah. And what's leading to ask, you know, like what was the initial process or how did you go about initially funding the launch of your magazine? 
Um, yeah, so with that, it was a very interesting process because it did take long, it took take a lot longer. Um, one thing I will say is um funding any project obviously takes time, everything was out of pocket in that sense. Um, but also wisdom, where were the, the first few shoots costly? very, very costly because, you know, you want to do extreme. I got everybody goodie bags that were, yeah, people get food and snacks at the moment and that's all they're getting because I'm like, listen, I'm trying to <laughs> up the costs. Um, but yeah, you know, initially you make your mistakes, you go yeah. above and beyond and you do a lot. So I now it's actually is applying a lot of wisdom because everything was out of pocket and to a certain extent, a lot of it still is. So now in this phase where it's one year, a lot of it was brand awareness and building awareness of, okay, this is what we stand for. This is our ethos and really just getting that additional visibility. So a lot of that has been, like I said, out of pocket, saving, reinvesting. Um, so now we're entering the phase of, okay, now it's time to make the money so I can reinvest. So it's circular. So I think it's also, I would even, you know, we learn from our mistakes. I would have started that way earlier you know, thinking about, okay, what are the ways that I can reinvest? What are the smart ways that people are doing? So the example, is it releasing digital products? Because maybe physical products isn't the right way to go. Is it, you know, doing a membership at the moment? So really thinking about the different aspects there. Um, So I would say, I feel like I made the mistake earlier of going straight out of pocket, not necessarily thinking about where the money would be coming. Um. So my advice for anybody is really think about the the structure of the business. What is the business model? What's the pricing model that you want? And just because if it is a Christian based um, business, it doesn't mean that you can't charge. By the way, and I think a lot of Christians have a tendency to undercharge, um, which I don't think is a godly thing either. I would say the best thing to do to find a price point is ask God. Um, mm-hmm. I will say this: God is my business partner to be honest he is the owner I'm I'm the manager so um yeah I'd say initially funded all by myself but we're definitely entering a phase of like okay how can we be efficient and how can we be productive and how can most importantly be profitable not even for my own sake but the goal overall is to consistently reinvest in the business but also so that we can have the spirit of excellence and that does take money um but initially I think use wisdom. Where can you find cheaper things? So I've had, you know, I have friends who are in the fashion industry. They will send their clothing. So that's the styling aspect done. I have a lot of friends who are photographers and stuff. So we find um, kind of an exchange because whilst I'm in, a, you know, I do the magazine, I'm also a marketer. I will give like consultations. Collaboration is key. So think about what can you do to bless other people and there's that value exchange. So maybe they give you a discount, they'll give you a discount rate. What can you do for somebody else? So I think it's like the first, especially the first year where funds might be a bit low, use wisdom. You know, so I don't always have to use the over the top studios at the moment. It's like, what can I use right now? And we've done some of our best shots in the most interesting of places we did we did an outdoor shoot we did another one where we just played with lighting it was a tiny studio but we worked really well with the lighting that was there so wisdom be creative be intuitive with it um don't splash the cash too much but actually have a plan and a project because sometimes you can get so excited with it we're like yeah sure i'll pay i'll do this but it's like okay you from even a, a wisdom perspective if you're going to be even registering your business, you need to be able to account for your finances. So I would say, yeah, um, initially all out of pocket. I've definitely learned my lesson. Um, it took me a year, but yeah, we're getting there. I guess what would you say is like the biggest thing that you learned through that first that first year of you know getting to know more of the industry, you know, go and learn about shoes and angles and lights. Like imagine all the different things you had to learn in that first year. What would you say is one thing people should like take from your experience so they don't make that same mistake? Interesting. One thing. I think it's hard to say one thing. Um, okay. So this one I would say is more for people who are uncomfortable in leadership, right? Um, embrace leadership and 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 use your voice I think that sometimes we especially when you're collaborating and what I do requires a lot of people that I struggle to advocate for myself 
that if something I wasn't happy with, I wouldn't want to say anything. I'm like, I don't want to ruffle feathers. They tried. But I would say, do work on your leadership skills, not leadership in terms of, okay, it's just delegating or me just telling people what to do, but actually have a biblical understanding of what leadership is. Even if there's only one of you in the business, you're still leading somebody or leading you. And if you don't understand what leadership is, you will struggle. You might have the skills necessary. You might have the character necessary or the intelligence or the wisdom necessary. But if your leadership fails, everything else will fail. Whether you need to study, one, study the Bible, because I think the greatest example of leadership is Jesus himself. There are other books that you can glean wisdom from, you know, and that's a big part, I would say, continue to learn. Don't get comfortable. Continue to learn even as you launch your business. You know, there is loads of books about leadership. Learn what leadership is. Learn, because again, even if it's just you, you are leading yourself. So I had to really craft leadership, especially now the team is growing. I I have to be on my leadership game. What are your weak areas when it comes to leadership? Sometimes I know that when I have so much to do, there are some, I can forget the small details. I have a PA who's so meticulous with stuff. I'm like, thank God for her because she'll tell me X, Y, Z, but that I still have to lead. And part of leadership is serving. So for me, how am I bettering the people that I'm leading? So that's what I would say. It's work on your leadership skills. That's amazing. I like I like the fact that you mentioned that leadership is serving because oftentimes people think leadership is just delegating, just telling people what to do instead of actually serving the people um, that is helping you. And I, a, you made a comment earlier, which um, is often, it's in some way it can be true. And as regards to, you know, how Christian business owners or influencers, you know, when it comes to finance, they're over, they usually find themselves discounting themselves, you know, that's my brother in Christ, you know, I'm working with a church, um, I guess my question or how I want to phrase this question, how did you go from that mindset, you know, you know, I don't want to give discounts to everybody, you know, to not realizing the value you're providing to the market? Mm-hmm. I think there's a, there's a balance, right? There is definitely a balance. I am, um, like I said, using it, wisdom is key. And that's why I say like wisdom is so, so important. Um, there are seasons that you're going to have to give for free. Do not get me wrong, you know. Um, it's how you sow your seeds. It's how you gain experience. So I think it's how you collaborate. So I'm not saying in the early stages, even from a work perspective, like whether it's career, you do loads of internships, right, to develop that portfolio. It's it's understandable. So depending on what you're doing, you might have to do free um, for a while or as you develop, as you learn, using it as an experience. So think about more so the value, so sometimes I've done things for free because I've understood the value in me doing something. So I'd say, think about the value as much as the monetary aspect. So I've done jobs for free from even a marketing perspective, I've because I knew it was an opportunity for me to learn. But there comes a point where it's like, okay, I need to build a business here, right? I need to reinvest. I need to do well. There needs to be excellence, whether you know, it's starting off as something on the side, money is needed because you're going to have to reinvest into the business. It, it doesn't make sense to consistently do discounts. It doesn't make sense because how will your business grow? So this is yeah. from a, a wisdom perspective. And I think a lot of the time we re, we leave wisdom for it. And in all honesty, God might tell you sometimes to do something for free. You know, you don't know why. God might say, you know, bless this person. But I also know God has told me to say, you know what, you need to learn to charge people because the Bible also talks about, and I hope everyone hears me and hears me well, not casting pearls to swine, right? When you know you have something that's of value, it's okay to charge. And Christians, as much as we tell people that you have to be willing to charge, Christians also have to be willing to pay. Mm. I find that's what the issue is. We're not willing to pay, so we're forced to discount. I've said this to myself, you know, if sometimes, if someone's not willing to pay, I'm okay with you not being my target audience. Mm. That's fine. Because if someone sees the value of what I'm doing, then you're my target audience. 
because it's meeting a need. If you don't feel like it's meeting a need enough, that's okay. There are other brands who will pay cheaper, who you know will offer cheaper, that's fine. But as Christians, we're very, very reluctant to have a willingness to pay and a willingness to sow towards what someone's doing. You know, I've seen it time and time again. I've seen Christian brands, um, I saw it recently in someone's comment. And when I say a beautiful fashion brand, someone in the comments was like, well, that's too expensive. Like, I can't believe you're charging that much for spreading the gospel. I was, I'm like, do people understand the breakdown? So you want him to create beautiful, high quality garments, but you're not willing to pay the price. And because it's like, why are we so quick to spend money on all these other brands, which is literally used to spread darkness, but we're not willing to invest? into other people so sometimes even if it means i've got less people i think it's also teaching us as business people standards it's okay to have standards and say no it's okay to exclude even from a marketing perspective we actually recommend excluding people it's okay to have an you don't want to be for everyone trust me you do not want to be for everyone and that's okay and you're not going to be for everyone but keep your standard know what you're worth know what your offering is worth and the value of it the right people will pay especially if you inquired of god if you said god this is what i believe you're telling me to to put it on or to to place the price on and god has validated that and i say every business decision should be influenced by god if god has validated that price point and someone's upset that's fine i can't please everyone god bless there are other brands that might be more to your liking and that's okay no that's yeah you know 100 right and you know one thing that you said you know the part that christian are not willing to pay and what came to mind for me as you were saying that is is it why is it always you know when you think about christianity or you talk you just use the you just put the word out christian the first thing people think of when in terms of finance is poverty you know, mm-hmm. like free, you know, uh, suffering. Like I understand that, you know, there's some suffering that does come w- in this walk of Christianity. There's some um, trials and tribulations yes. that you have to go through, you know. Everyone's definition of financial free or how financial free will look different. Um, but it doesn't mean that a person, A, does not... It's not going to be blessed in a certain way compared mm-hmm. to person B. And I think that's something that as Christian, we have to open our mindset. We have to understand that every one of us are, are tools in God's toolbox. And, you know, God uses us in different ways. But some of us, it needs to be financed in, in, in terms of growing, you know, pushing the kingdom, like you said. And it's funny you said that, you know, a lot of us will quickly support other businesses without understanding the, I guess, the background, the information, the, where the money goes to after, you mm-hmm. know. People often think, yeah, it goes to some CEO or goes to the worker, but a lot of these money is, is going to war, it's going to guns, it's going to different things that you don't want to talk, you wouldn't be out, I'm outside publicly talking about, and but you're not knowing your feeling them you feel them on a constant daily yearly basis and i think it leaves us i will say you know it's important for people to know where their money is going like i said always tell people no matter what law whatever policy whatever you see there's someone behind there making money and it's like oh thank you to all these people <laughs> you know whether it's good or bad thank you to all the people that you know let's go into my marketing plan making money so i think it's just important for christian to actually be more mindful of how we spend our money, you know, use discernment, you know, and not just think because it's a Christian brand it should be for free, but if it's a Gucci or Louis, you know, Apple, you know, oh, sure, I'll just pay it. Um, yeah, so that's, I like the fact that you mentioned that, and which kind of leads me to want to ask something, to ask you a question, because you talk about partnership and you're growing your team and providing value to other creative. How do you go about, you know, structuring, I guess, contract or just relationship with like, you know, with a photographer, you know, with somebody who may edit your pictures, your editor, you know, so that way everyone is still thriving. And it's not just only one person thriving. 
I think it also goes back to the heart of the person. I think as business ultimately is always about providing value, right? And I think that's why I'm saying it's a, for, for you to flourish in business, you have to have a Christ mindset because it's also about what you can give as opposed to what you can get. Um, so I would say always think about the value you're providing to another person and be that explicit. How can I help you? So with a lot of these, some people, for example, who have been photographers, it was a case of early on in the days, it was a case of, I'm just trying to build my portfolio. I'm talented, but I don't have much opportunity. Great. Let's, you know, let's connect. I want to support you in that, in that sense. So, or I pick like, for example, Christian makeup artists and so on. So it's building within the community, whereas we're getting that value and that's exchange there. So I always think about one, how, how can I help you? And always think about that collaboration. Now there's also been trial and error because there are going to be trial and errors. So initially it was just like, oh yeah, show up, um, do X, Y, Z, but I've had to fit parameters. So again, within the first year there's been, you know, trial and error. And because I'm I'm blessed in what I do, it's all Christian. There has never been a photographer or makeup artist or designer who has been on set or a fashion or anyone who's a, even a cover person that hasn't been Christian, which I'm very, very fortunate. I know that not, not something that everybody gets the opportunity to, but even then people are people, you know? Yeah. So it's, I've had to learn to create standards and also express them. And it's not in a bad way or, you know, it's how you communicate. This is, I have multiple calls of the people that I, you know, have on the front cover. I would say, okay, one, first thing is this is the vision for it this is what I believe God is saying for the front cover I'm going to send you all the information what clothes are you comfortable with what makes you comfortable so I'm always thinking about the other person right and always thinking about again it goes back to leadership how can I serve so I would say that it's when you're one minded mindful of the other person or the people that you're connecting with that is key two learn parameters and expectations with your business, have a code of conduct, right? Have a, a code of ethics that when I partner with certain people, this is what it looks as my expectation for, of myself first and foremost, and what's my expectation of the other person. So for example, you know, I would say I want a turnover of this amount. Is this possible? But these all have to be communicated prior because I've, I've made the mistake of communicating afterwards and now we're behind. So again, trial and error, learn to develop relationships with people. Don't use people. So I said relationship, develop relationship and collaborate is going to be key um, and value. I think it always goes back to how am I blessing the other person? I think naturally when you bless others, they're more inclined to bless you. And I think because of that, I've had people bless me with like discounts of photography and I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you. Or offer to do things at a reduced price or sometimes free completely free because even my my service doesn't just start or doesn't just begin with like how can I help you on the day on photo shoots everyone is fed I make sure everyone's fed I will go if I can't do a coffee run I'll get one of the assistants can you get everybody coffee or hot drinks it's on me like I said the first time I got everybody goodie bags again not sustainable can't do that every time maybe later on we'll get reintroduced <laughs> um but it's thinking about the other people and how you can be beneficial to them, making sure that I give shout outs when necessary, promoting when necessary, and just going back to the other people. So I have a rotation of photographers. I, I use them quite often of videographers and you build a relationship with them. So don't neglect relationship, don't neglect value at every single stage from beginning to end. So yeah. That's amazing. And I guess, you know, a question I want to ask as, at this juncture is, because, you know, you mentioned about budget earlier. And I guess, what would you say is the component that people should consider, you know, like what should things people should consider when trying to do a, a magazine shoot, you know, trying to publish a magazine? Like, what are some things that you think are important for people to include in the budget? Um, There's a lot. There's a lot more that even... And I was, again, very blessed that somebody... Um, I actually got advice first. I got to speak. And I think learn from other people is always that very first step. So whether you're listening to this or anybody else that has that experience, um, learn and glean from other people is the very first step. So I ask what is necessary? Because to me, I'd be like, just shut up for a shoot, have a model. It's like, no. Um, so for what I needed to work on 
is first and foremost photography make sure I've got my photographers um I've got my videographer as well so that's why I get a lot of my BTS the studio if you are having a studio are you going to have one location multi-location multi-location is going to be more expensive so if you're going to do one location switch it up so that's what I tend to do I try to play around sometimes with if it's not different clothing it usually will be multiple outfits then at the very least I try to do like play around with different backgrounds so that's what I found quite interesting and be creative with it like really be creative so one of our shoots um it was an arcade completely free didn't have to pay for that that was great um so thinking about that we've done outdoor shoots which again are free there are cheaper studios I would say learn and get lots of creativity I have a Pinterest board. I have a very in-depth Pinterest board where I'm looking at or learning how to make something look more expensive. A very simple studio with the right lighting, with the right background, with the right props. I've had stuff where it's literally just, and I keep all of my props. I keep it as memorabilia. Here I've got like a little fake phone. And then here I've got a little pink camera. That was used. That was the prop. Very simple shoot. Um, Sometimes, you know, depending on if I have a relationship with the person, sometimes I clothes aren't even needed I will send a mood board of like this is do you have any of these belongings could you bring that if they don't I purchase it partnering with stylists and fashion brands um who can donate clothes or lend clothes and then give it back so really thinking about all those different things makeup artist as well if you want to have a hairstylist stylists as well is a big one so if it's a fashion again if it's a fashion magazine get a stylist but even if it's not stylist is important just from an aesthetics perspective creative director as well so like I said there's a lot of moving parts um if you have a creative background you can do a lot of that yourself so I have initially I was a stylist because my background is in fashion and I was also um the creative director just from experience and like I said God's my business partner so he will tell me exactly what to do um so in that sense so that is the shoot itself. Other costs would be the platform that you're hosting the magazine, if it's digital, or if you want it to be printed, then if you are printing, think about the distribution of it. How do you want people to purchase it? Where are you going to be selling it? Are you going to be selling it online? Physical stores, thinking about that. Marketing, of course, are the marketers always a big part. Are you going to be running ads? Um, what are the marketing tools you're leveraging as well? all of that stuff so there's a lot there's a lot I could go on and on um but like I said wisdom collaborate where you can the cut costs learn I didn't have an editing bone in my body I've learned to edit I've people who you know have taught me so there's times that I'm like I'm very involved with the process so learn new skills such a great opportunity to learn new skills um even start editing reels a lot more which again, didn't have an editing brain in my body. So learn, um, collaborate with different people. And yeah. That's, that's amazing. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to ask, you know, because you are bringing people to be featured in your magazine, you know, how do you go about reaching out to those people and just making sure they also see the value that you're providing to want to collaborate? Uh, what is the gamer that you mentioned that you recently just interview and bring, have on your magazine so how do you go about that um I would say again God my business partner there isn't a person I have selected in all honesty there has not been one person that I said I think you're a good idea because you would get visibility you know every person has been God has told me this is who I want on the front cover and this is the theme and the theme is usually something that resonates with them. And that usually is a selling point because, you know, again, business personalization. Um, in the company that I work for, because I work in a marketing company, the saying that we all have is, if it feels like it's for everyone, then it feels like it's for no one. Mm. So even in my outreach, I need it to be personalized. So it's a case of, listen, in prayer, God has told me that, this is the theme because of the fact that you do X, Y, Z. And I believe that this is the, the moment that somebody feels like you've seen them, that you've heard them, that you've listened, they're more inclined. Now, it's not everybody that even agrees. I don't always get, you know, people to respond. That's fine. 
because I so trust and believe in God, the right people will serve and will come at the right time. Some people, it's just the wrong timing and you'll come back later. Um, so I would say is in your outreaches, when it comes to collaboration of people you do not know, personalization. Demonstrate that you understand the value that they could bring and then explain to them. There's not one outreach where I don't explain to them the vision. This is why I started V. This is the purpose of V. This is the mission statement. So it's not just collaboration for collaboration's sake. And the right people always capture the vision. So if I just say, hey, I think you're great. Yeah, sure. Tell them exactly the personalization, the value you're bringing, but help them understand the vision. So I'd say, yeah, those are the key points. No, yeah, you're saying all right. And just to go back, just to like, from you reaching the people, you get the shoot, you know, how then do you go about making sure you attract the right readers? You know, your your visibility is growing, you know, and to that way it can be profitable for you and for your whole team. Mm -hmm. Um, goes back to collaboration. So usually my request for whenever I am posting something um with somebody, I say, okay, can we collaborate on Instagram? Right. So a lot of it is at the moment very digital heavy and now we're shifting again so a lot of the time was that brand awareness so understanding the marketing aspect of it so I'm going to go into real marketing speech here so understanding brand awareness usually happens on like platforms such as social media happens on in-person events which is very overlooked network like I I am for network um I, the enemy uses people and so does God it mm. is mo to use people god you know the bible talks about um if there's one is better than two because the reward will be greater another one that says a thousand one will chase a thousand two will chase i think it's like ten thousand ten thousand yeah like the math doesn't even make sense with that i would say yeah. like it's that's how important collaboration is so go and speak to people go and connect with people I used to hate networking in all honesty because I'm like uh like I might have to talk about myself that's so awkward but when again you have to have an understanding that you are bringing value so I started to go to more networking events got to connect with some amazing people doing amazing things word of mouth matters word of mouth really matters leveraging the channels that you do have um whenever you are working with people ask them to share like hey could you put this on your page as well so I do that and now I'm shifting gears where we're doing a newsletter now so there's going to be email marketing that we're adding to it and think about what are the other channels that I could do you have your organic and your paid channels so if you are a one-person team learn on YouTube or whatever it may be to the best channels to actually reach your people so when you have a great understanding of your target audience, you'll be able to know when I say study your target audience, where are your target audience most active? I know my target audience is going to be Instagram and TikTok. They're not really going to be on Facebook as much. Then, you know, they might be on X. Um, they're going to be watching a lot of video content. So that's the next phase where we're going to be leveraging a lot more video content. But once you understand your people and where they are, it becomes easier to reach them because you're getting in front of them anyway. That's amazing. That, that's that's amazing. A very really detailed plan of, you know, getting things to the next level. And a question I wanted to ask, you know, through your experience, you know, what would you say has been the most rewarding experience since starting the magazine, you know, to interact with different people through the ups and downs? What would you say is the most rewarding experience you have had so far? Impact. I always say everything that I do in life is impact. So even when it comes to um, the marketing aspect of what I do, it's impact because I'm helping someone else's business get in front of the right people. And with the magazine, it's impact. So um, I've had a few people, for example, interview to be on the team. And I had like two interviews today, um, this week, sorry. And both said the exact same thing where it's, it's nice to have meaningful content and media for Christian women. Because a lot of the times it feels like as Christian women, we're not allowed to enter certain spaces or were either criticized by the world for entering those spaces, but were also criticized by the church for entering those spaces as well. So to get messages from women to say, I love what you're doing. Thank you. This helped me, whether it was with anxiety, whether it was body dysmorphia, whether it was how to deal with moving on 
from friendships and relationships impact and I think it's it's beautiful to I think that's what we should all strive for is the impact what is the impact of what we're doing and ultimately that was yeah and we even did an event our first event called Feminine and Faith where the whole topic was womanhood and femininity from a biblical standpoint right especially because that's been so under attack what does God define femininity and womanhood as and you know we've got amazing speakers to come and when I say the amount of people say like this changed the way that I saw my womanhood, this changed the way my relationship with how I view myself and understanding how God views me. And that for me is everything. If it brings someone closer to God, if it brings healing, if it brings restoration, revelation or clarity, then I've done my job. That goes back to my vision. I've gone back and I've I've done what God has called me to do. Um. So yeah, I think the rewarding thing is the people. Ultimately, it always goes back to the people and the people that God has entrusted me with. I don't have to know them personally, but the fact that God, the fact that they read that, it means that God for a moment in time has entrusted me with them. Um. So yeah, and if it's a blessing, then yeah, I would say that. And how would you say your faith, you know, your your walk in Christ has helped you through this journey you know, building business, interacting with people, getting over your fear of networking, you know, able to host events, you know, where you get a testimony back. How would you say your walk of Christ has played a role? Um, Surrender. It's taught me surrender and the necessity for surrender. Um, This was necessarily a journey that I had anticipated for myself. Um, So really that submitting your will, your plan, your desires to God is so key. So I think in the element of surrendering and knowing that God knows best has really taught me that, you know, God is faithful. Um, You know, I'm at an age where most people aren't thinking about business. Everyone's thinking about settling down. But I'm like, hey, God has me starting a business in this account. Like everything is like, what are you doing? Um, But it's taught me faith. It's taught me faith. It's taught me to know that, you know, um, God has a plan. And I've been, I've looked back at the, you know, my whole childhood, my most of my life, and I see God's fingerprint all throughout. My God was orchestrating, and you see God's faithfulness, and it stretched my faith. And writing has even been healing to me. It's brought healing, it's built restoration. And I find where the enemy can't necessarily, when something God has for you, the enemy can't necessarily stop you, but he'll try and delay you by making you think about yourself and this has allowed me to not think about self it's allowed me to care about the things that God cares about and that's his people um and yeah I feel like I've just learned a lot I've learned a lot I've learned about faith I've learned about stewards um stewardship diligence consistency um and knowing that when God gives you a revelation there's some revelation that's kept for you and there's others that it's it's for everybody you know um and I used to be very scared to share the things that God would put on my heart until one God one day God said to me how many words have died in your mouth and that mm. brought the, that brought the fear of the Lord in me I'm like you know what no um you know your business your gifts your skills is for others so I really learned to to, to really realize that God is, you know, sometimes before I used to say, you know, God cares about everything and you can honor God and everything. I've had to live it now. So I don't just write about it. I've had to live it. That God cares about this. God cares about my business. God cares about an article that I've written. God cares about a post. I don't necessarily like being in front of the camera. God's been like, I need you to do more videos. I'm like, God, I don't. God's like, are you going to disobey me? I'm like, no, I'll post it. Um, <laughs> So it's been a lot. It's been a stretching season, but I've seen how God has, God rewards the diligent. And I Amen. see that God rewards the diligent and we might not see the rewards immediately, but we have the certainty. And I've seen some of the rewards already. I've seen God's faithfulness already, the favor that I've, I've gotten to experience because I've walked in obedience. Um, Oh my gosh, the lessons could go on and on, but it stretched me. It's actually grown my relationship with God because of just the stresses of, are we going to meet the deadlines? Are we going to, and God will just, the beginning, the amount of sleepless nights I had, I was so stressed. One of the photographers who's often, you know, she's also a runner sometimes. Um, 
I used to get stressed and panicked if we're even running late or there's traffic. And she's like, I've just seen how God has healed your anxiety from you because we could be running late and you're just so chilled. Like, it'll be fine. Like, God has even used this to relax me. And I'm someone I like to know everything. And God's like, relax, you're not going to know everything. But just know that I'm going to come through every time. So, yeah. Amen. And I know you, this is one of my last few questions. I know you said you're in the phase of now reinvesting back to the business, focusing on monetizing. I don't know. Um, is there anything you can share in regards to how people can monetize the digital content um, mm -hmm. in regards to just, yeah, being, uh, owning the magazine, specifically the lifestyle magazine? Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of ways to do that. I would say community, and that's something that I'm focused on. So there's in even in marketing, there's a shift into individual from individual um marketing to community marketing. So people are really looking to develop communities and people are willing to pay to be a part of communities. Right. So that's my focus. My focus now is predominantly um community. And there's so many ways to develop community events. People are craving events, whether it's online events. Online events can be so cheap. Just invest in good quality, you know, uh, technology. You can do in-person events as well. Collaborate. I'm saying, I say this all the time. Is there somebody else that can collaborate in an in-person event? So do that. Um, you can do a paywall, some sort of subscription. Again, it goes back to value. So what is it that people think about? What are people willing to pay for? Right. So I think if it's a case of just, oh, no, I'm just going to be doing X, Y, Z. I'm just trying to make money. You will lose people. What you want to do is make people realize that there is something worth paying for. And you need to know what the value is. So for me, I understand the value of community. I understand that people want to learn. And that's why people read the magazine is because they want to learn about lifestyle and how to lead a godly lifestyle. So they have a value in that aspect, but they also love to learn from other people who are already doing it. Because all of a sudden, because as Christians, our faith tends to be because wavers because we don't have a reference point, right? Mm. We're like, oh, surely God, because I've never seen it. But my duty is to demonstrate to people and point to reference points. This person can. That's why God will often, people also say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, they're reference points. That same God will do it for you. So what I try to do is say, okay, here are your reference points. Learn from them. So a lot of it is going to be also about learning from one another. Um, so that's what I would say. So think about the value. So that's my value is the community aspect, providing people a reference point when it comes to their calling, to their purpose. That's something that they're going to be. Um, so of course, we're, we're creating different packages to make it easier for others as well. So just think about that. What is it that I'm actually providing people? What is it that I want? What need am I meeting? And then monetize it. Otherwise, it can be difficult to, to monetize if, if, if you don't know the worth or the value of what you're providing or you don't know what need you're meeting, what are you charging for, essentially? Yeah, you're 100% right. And that leads me to ask, you know, as we're wrapping up the interview, you know, what can people expect from you uh, for V Magazine, you know, going forward in the next five, 10 years? You know, what can the viewers, the listeners, you know, expect from you guys? Mm -hmm. um, we definitely want to, you know, whilst it's a magazine, this is the starting point. Um, what I really want V to be is a media entertainment house, right? And this will be under that umbrella, be one of the magazines I have. I would love to do multiple magazines, not just V. I would love to do like a men's magazine. I would love to do multiple magazines ultimately, um, I also want to do podcasts. I want to, I would love to go into a more production role, if I'm honest, um, and help other Christians. Like I said, I want V to be a platform for other people. So whether it's writers, if you're a podcaster, but don't know, can't don't necessarily have the funds to do it. I want to be able to create and help other people to produce Christian content, whether it's short films, that sort of aspect. It's media. I really believe that God is giving the media mountain back to the kingdom of God. You know, I, I did my master's in media and communications. And when you understand the root of media was to teach, that was the whole point is to spread a message. 
you know, there's a there's a theory called the medium is the message. The way in which or the channel in which you choose to reach people tends to be the message. So it's think, thinking about, okay, a lot of the way this that we think today has been communicated through media. You become desensitized to certain things. You believe certain things are X, Y, Z because of what the media shows us. And I really, in short, want to take the media mountain for God again. Re whether it's TV, whether it's streaming, video, podcast, music, we consume so much of it. I just want to create ones that glorify God. Like, um, you know, C.S. Lewis, his book is read in schools till today, and he's a Christian. Yes, yes, indeed. You know, so that's my goal is to really create Christ-centered media that you, that also attracts non-Christians as well. That's amazing. I de and I we definitely looking forward to you accomplishing those goals. Those who are watching, those who are listening, you know, you have dropped a lot of gems. You know, a lot of business insight. You know, for a young lady, you know, a you know, eighteen year old you. What would you say to eighteen year old you, who may have heard this story, who have listened to this video, um, and hear everything that God is doing in your life, but for one reason or another. You know, they don't see how you. this can be their reference point for God to do X and Y and Z in their life. Mm -hmm. um, even if I'm not the reference point or anybody else, or, the, or you don't have a reference point for the desires and the will of God, I was meditating on this verse and it was a verse that I've never considered it in this way, but it's no eyes have seen and no ears have heard. You have to believe that if you have not yet seen a reference point for what, what you are desiring or what you're believing, there's a possibility that you are the reference point. Mm. No eyes have seen what God is going to do in you. No ears have heard of what God is going to do with you. And God was really showing me how different people in the Bible, there was no reference point. They became the reference point. Like how is Joseph an interpreter of dreams but also prime minister. Imagine somebody in a high ranking official is able to interpret dreams. Esther, a beauty pageant winner who ends up being queen, but also is someone who's able to change policy and legislation. Daniel, high ranking government official in a foreign land, his prophecy still stands today. Some of his prophecies were seeing unfold today. So imagine a high ranking official as a prophet, you have David, a poet, a singer, a psalmist, a prophet, and a king. If you do not yet have reference point, and you can take mini reference points, right? So like, oh, maybe, you know, you're called to fashion, but not in the way that you've seen it yet. Say, okay, I've seen a little bit of that. I know God's going to build even more. Say, Lord, give me greater revelation of where you're calling me to go and give me the faith to believe it. And the bigger the dream, the more likely it is God. My dream was to work for a magazine, but God called me to start a magazine. So also say like, God, give me the revelation of where you're calling me to go, but also give me the faith to match it. Even if I have not yet seen it, I am willing to be a reference point. And that has to be our, our prayer. I am willing to be a reference point if I have not yet seen it. Amen, 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 amen. You know, I definitely want to thank you very much, Ms. Serena, for your time. You know, for your um, just getting to know you and your your magazine. You know, for those who are listening, I hope you guys don't see another guest, another entrepreneur sharing their story. But I hope this encourages you. You know, and encourage you to go out there and chase after the vision, to start building that vision that God has called you to do. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Stay blessed. Thank you again. Thank you. Now.